Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, October 16th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. First off, a couple quick clarifications. Number one, the candle that you see right there will still be moving around. That's because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol SASI. Nice pattern here has formed, and the thing with good patterns is when a lot of people are watching the same patterns and wondering the same things, call it a self-filling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can produce some very dynamic movement. So let's get this pattern drawn into play. So again, I'm not trying to impress you, I'm not trying to apply, this is some sort of great talent or discovery on my part. I assure you a lot of people have noticed these levels. So again, it brings about that attribute of potential self-filling prophecies. So we have that resistance trend line right there. And then across the bottom here, we have that nice little area of support. So change that to represent support. And then to make this easier to see, let's keep it one color now. So we have our resistance, we have our support, we have the big explosive move right here. For you golfers out there, try to make a little bit more visual, put the golf hole down here, and we now have a bull pennant pattern. So nothing is guaranteed, but like I said, self-filling prophecy wise, is it valid, is it plausible to think that the price comes back up here to the top of the pattern and then gets a break up through it, that that break in and of itself could create additional buying pressure? That is certainly a plausible outcome. Next one here, ticker symbol BPTH. And overall, started off nicely on the day, but certainly did have a bigger pullback here. But the interesting thing about this pullback is it at least has started now to level off, which brings about our key level here as support right here at the 65 cent mark. And nothing fancy or complicated behind the logic behind that, other than the fact of that's where the pullback finally stopped. If you've traded long enough, then I'm sure you've seen stocks that gap up. And then after the gap up, they come down and come down and then they keep dropping, dropping, dropping. And it turns into a massive gap and trap. But that, that was not the case here. Yes, it did pull back, but it did eventually find some sideways movement right there. And again, that sideways movement happened at essentially the 65 cent mark. So keep an eye on that as a key area of support. In terms of areas of resistance, the level that stands out to me right here at the top part of this little range at the 77 cent mark. So keep a close eye on 77 cents. And if the price can get a push up through there, uh, then maybe just maybe, especially if it's a higher volume break, uh, the price can try to make another move up into, you know, that dollar mark and maybe above. But all in all, got the big move, got a nice pullback. And now what makes this interesting is again, the sideways action. And is this just a consolidation before another move back upwards? We'll see what next week has to offer. Next one here, PRZO, and this will mean a bit more to those of you that have watched past watch list videos, but if you have, and hopefully you remember, I talked about this wedge pattern here, and more specifically, that resistance line right there, and check it out. Price came up here during the day, broke through it, came up, came back down, back tested it. Beautiful example of that resistance turning into support, and now back up, it's gone. So overall, wedge pattern did indeed produce a very, very nice bounce to the upside, or, or excuse me, not a bounce, a breakout to the upside. So we'll go ahead and get rid of these levels as they serve their purpose for now. And one of the newest areas of support now is just this former breakout point over here, these former highs up around 285, and that's just a you know basic rule in charting when levels of resistance, which again, you can see right here, was a level of resistance are broken. You wanna see them act as support. So that would be more so the ideal level. And I say ideal because if we were to ask Clay, what would make this chart look the absolute strongest going forward? And yeah, that would be a, if the price can stay above 285. But from the bigger picture point of view, it's not like if the price drops below there, that means the entire chart's destroyed. Because from the overall standpoint, you're gonna now wanna start to watch that purple line there. 50 period moving average, keyword there being moving. So as time goes by, that line is gonna move itself higher and higher. So it's essentially gonna be a tread line that draws itself for you. So as long as the price remains above the tread line, quote unquote, then the overall trend is still plenty in the bull's favor. In terms of areas of resistance, nothing fancy or complicated here. Literally just a question of where did the party finally stop today? And that was right up there at $3 and 16 cents. So keep an eye on 316 moving forward. But all in all, very, very impressive breakout today. We'll, so we'll see if more momentum can show up next week. Next one here, SQQQ, and this is just an ETF. So if you believe that the NASDAQ market is going to go down, this one will actually go up. So it allows you to make money even if the NASDAQ market goes down. So again, if NASDAQ market goes down, this one will go up. And because the NASDAQ had a rough day today, that is why that one has had a very nice move over the past couple of days, which is now brings it about a very near, a key level that you gotta think a lot of people are watching. Whoops, that former little area of support right there at $19.50, you can see that on the gap up, Back here, did a good job of trying to hold that support. And then when it did fail right there, 
uh, you know, that's what produced a very nasty move to the downside. So just a classic example of that support now acting as resistance. So key resistance number one heads into next week on this one, $19.50. If the price can break up through there, the next key overarching level of resistance you'd wanna keep an eye on is that pink line, which on my chart represents a very well-known, the very famous 200 period moving average. If there are any sort of pullbacks in the key level, which I've already talked about in uh, another chart, is that purple line here, 50 period moving average. So as I said on that one, keyword they were being moving. So moving forward now, this thing is gonna start no pun intended, but this thing is going to start to move higher and higher and curl back upwards. Uh, so as long as the price stays above there, uh, then, you know, that's a just sign that this chart here in and of itself is remaining uh, very bullish. But yeah, all eyes on 1950 next week. We'll see if the price can push up through it or not. Next one here, ticker symbol AMC and just a brutal, brutal day on this one. Although I will say that from a presentation standpoint, kind of tricky to talk about because it really just depends what your game plan and strategy was. What I mean, well, if you're a day trader, flipper, scalper, whatever you want to call yourself, and you were buying right there, or maybe you bought the dip right there and your plan was to buy and sell within 20 minutes. Well, then from that perspective, the chart is an absolute train wreck because yes, the price dropped a whole lot. But if we look at things from the bigger picture point of view, you can see here that the price is still in an overall uptrend and is still trying to work its way you know, higher. Now, a very simplistic way to just see that the price is still in an uptrend is look down here at the pink line, which you now know is that famous 200 period moving average. But more specifically, you can see it's got an upwards angle to it. So that does mean that the overall trend is still moving upwards. So yes, big pullback today, no doubt about it. And I understand if you're a day trader and you bought right there, you don't care about that 200 period moving average, but I'm making these comments from the angle of somebody that cares more so about the bigger picture point of view. In the nearer term, in terms of what level would you like to see hold? Definitely right there where the price finally leveled out at $9.40. But if the price does break below there, next key and very important, and I'd, I'd call it a must hold level, would be that pink line there because if the price drops below there, that implies that the entire trend has turned itself around. But yeah, brutal day to day, but we'll see if it can try to consolidate out early next week. Real quick, want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free live class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box to sign up with, or if you're watching right there at my site, there's an area on the page itself that you can use to sign up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then definitely get signed up for the free live online class. Next one, PLTR and not a great day today, not a train wreck either, but what I'm very curious about now is the price has actually violated a couple of uh, key levels of support. The first one being that purple line, 50 per moving average. And then for those of you that have watched past videos, hopefully you remember me talking about that tread line right there as support. And you can see that the price has even broke down below there. Now, the good news is it's not like it broke and then completely collapsed. So that is definitely a, a, a positive side of things, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the price did still break below it and is still now below those areas. So that's something that definitely needs to be accounted for. And the next level that... Uh, yeah, uh, I'm trying to, I sh I'm just going to use that one down there. So, cause that one's kind of irrelevant right now, all the way down there, but definitely the next key level right there at $16 and 90 cents, which I would definitely consider still not a must hold level, but an important level, the must hold area. Maybe you've already guessed it like the, on AMC would be that pink line there, 200 period moving average. But the good news is as of now, the price isn't anywhere close to that. So it's not like that's threatened uh, to be broken or anything like that. But nonetheless, those would be the main areas of support. In terms of areas of resistance, first level in the near term, gonna be that purple line there, 50 period moving average. Once again, just based on that rule, that when levels of support are broken, they tend to act as resistance. And then the next big one that I've talked about in past uh, days, up there at 1830. But as of now, 1830, kind of irrelevant because priority number one is right there again, that 50 period moving average. Next one here, TSLA Tesla, and a very, very rough day on this one. Not necessarily because it was a, a red day, but because it broke down through so many areas of support. The first level was that area I talked about on Thursday's video, and then the price broke through there, came down here, and you can see right here, check it out, that pink line. Oh, it tried its best, and for a while, it did act as support, but right there on that candle, the bulls finally ran out of energy, and down the price went. So a lot of areas of support now getting you know rejected and turned into resistance. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this level down here because I think, or is price below there? Nope, sitting right there and doing battle with it. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, but my ugly mug right now is blocky. There it is. So you can see this was an area of support from a few weeks ago down there at the 250 uh, 50 mark. We'll just uh, 250 70. We'll just call it 250 50. And that was a key level. And you can see to give credit credit to good thing that it's once again acting as support. So it does bring about a valid question. Last time I was down here, does it bounce? Will it bounce again? I wish trading were that easy and I wish there was guarantees or is not, but it's a certainly valid question to throw out there because there is a track record of it bouncing from there before. If it does try to bounce, 
And then first key level is going to be that 200 period moving average. So you're going to want to very uh, keep a close eye on that. And then that purple line too, which seems to be far away. But as I said earlier, it is a moving average. So as time goes by next week, that line is going to move downwards relatively quickly and get more and more relevant. In terms of levels of support, if that level does not hold right there, then the next level of support you'd want to keep a close, close eye on is down there right around the 247.50 mark. So keep an eye on that. But yeah, overall, rough day for Tesla. Next one here, TPST. And overall, not a whole lot to say, uh, assuming you watched the video previously, because the price is still stuck between the sideways channel that I talked about. So bottom of the channel, support 360, top of the channel, support 592. But I bring that up because the longer and longer it stays in this channel, the more and more eyeballs that are gonna take notice. And the more and more eyeballs that are watching the same exact thing, the higher and higher probabilities and higher potential there is for a good self-fulfilling prophecy. So you gotta think that now after today with the price you know, honoring both these levels that I talked about before, there's gonna be just that many more people watching it. So if you are somebody that likes to play channel patterns, then definitely keep an eye on this one. But yeah, there's not really anything else I can say because the price is still stuck within the channel. But the biggest difference here is that because it stayed stuck, there's gonna be that many more eyeballs watching it next week. Next one here, PLUG, and did this one I, can't, I think a couple days ago, but regardless, I've talked about that level right there at $7.70 being an area of resistance and sure enough, the power of charts. You can see this morning price came up around that area and did actually get slightly above it, but there was never any momentum that could be established and maintained and back the price uh, went. So that level remains the same right there at $7.70. And then as far as supports are concerned, uh, you know, so it did pull back today, but by no means did it crash or anything like that. And uh, the level that stands out to me all about that pink line, 200 period moving average. Uh, and really it's kind of, even if you just want to try to draw, and maybe I'm going to get too cute here, but there just does seem to be, you know, just a, a methodical little channel here. Uh, yeah, you could say, well, that's a downwards channel, which is fair enough, but you also had this big move up right here, which actually turns this thing into a bull flag pattern. But I also understand if you're thinking that I'm trying to fit a square peg through a round hole, uh, because really just from the simplified approach, the levels that I think most people are watching, 770 or right up around that area, and then that 200 period moving average. So as of now, just consolidating, but is, uh, is next week the week where it makes another move to the upside out of the, out of the pattern here? We'll see what happens. Next one, TQQQ. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about SQQQ. This one is TQQQ. And the difference here with this one is that if you believe that the NASDAQ market is going to rise, this one will also rise. Remember, the S one would go down if the NASDAQ uh, uh, went up, uh, or excuse me, would go down. Uh, but this one, I know I'm confused by SQQQ. If the NASDAQ goes down, that one goes up. But in this situation, if the NASDAQ goes up, this one will also go up. Uh, but because the NASDAQ went down today, that is why this one has gone down over the past couple of days. So I probably just confused everybody. Uh, but the TQQ, again, if you think the NASDAQ market is gonna rise, this one will also rise. Uh, so yes, very rough day here for NASDAQ. First key, in fact, I'm just gonna get rid of these levels as they've served their purpose for now. And I don't wanna have lines everywhere. Uh, but first key update, again, just based on that rule and levels of support are broken and closed below. They tend to act as resistance. So 3845 gonna be the key level if there is any sort of attempted bounce back upwards. And then in the big picture, if there is another move to the downside, you probably know right where I'm headed with this. But yes, it's the 200 period moving average, which has been talked about quite a bit, but uh, it's really found itself uh, several times now in, in a very important level. Now, in the very near term, which would be fair. Well, what about this area right here? It kind of based out right there, and that's fair. I would not disagree with that at all. So in the near term, a $37 area, but from more of an overarching level, uh, the level that you would definitely want to see hold strong if the price does make another push to the downside would be that 200 period moving average. But yeah, no doubt about it. It broke through that area of support and then that really opened up the floodgates and the rest is history. But we'll see if the price can recover next week. So that wraps up the top 10 list. Again, if you like what you saw here, then I want you to go get signed up for that class next week. It'll be Thursday, October 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and it will truly be live. I'll be there. I'll answer questions live, all that sort of good stuff. So definitely get signed up. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, then do two things for me. Hit the like button, leave a comment below. Those two things help out the algorithm, they help out the channel. And uh, as long as I know people are enjoying, I'll continue to get this watch list content out to you. So hit the like button, leave a comment below, and definitely get signed up for that free class next week. Have a great weekend.